everyone. Thank you for tuning in. It feels like ages since I've done a get ready with me on this channel. I think it's because of the big chunk of time I was doing the Emily Awards. It really does feel like a long time for me. So I'm doing a get ready with me. It's going to be kind of random. Um, I did want to put on this new hourglass foundation and kind of show you what I mean about how, yes, it looks good, but it's maybe not the most remarkable foundation. And yeah, I just kind of shot my stash. It's not necessarily old stuff. Actually, a lot of it's maybe a little bit on the new side, but it's just a mixture, just a random look, okay? And we're expecting a winter storm to hit today, and then it's going to get super duper cold. So in the spirit of that, I'm definitely going to have a rosy cheek today. I got this sweatshirt on. It's Christmas Eve, Eve, Eve as I shoot this. I'm so excited. I do need to go wet my elf sponge, BRB. Does anybody say BRB anymore? I feel like Bub and I say it to each other all the time when we're doing something. So I'm going to see if I can kind of like liven up this foundation. I'm going to see how I like it with the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. This I believe I wear in the shade too, but they didn't do a very good job of printing that on the sticker, I'll just say. I'm just going to swipe some of this on. I've got all my skincare on. Today I straight up used my Vanny Cream, which I keep in this Bobbi Brown thing. Use my Vanny Cream as eye cream, which I've been doing a lot. That is the most luxurious stuff ever. If you straight up did a blind test and nobody told you it was vanny cream and then they're like here try a little bit of this on your under eye area you'd be like whoa that's nice <laughs> find out you get a giant tub of it for like seven bucks or something okay so I'm just blending this in with my elf duo complexion brush I stayed up a little bit late last night I was working on my thousand piece jigsaw puzzle on my puzzle table. I will link to my puzzle table below. I will also link to the puzzle because this this has got to be the easiest 1000 piece puzzle ever. It's like a bunch of kind of old timey Christmas book covers all put together and it's so cute and precious and I love it. I mean some of the books a few of the books we have and read, like The Christmas Cat, Kristen Game gave us that one, but it's so cute and I almost got done with it. Like I just have a little bit to go. It's not a gimme, like it, it's still a challenge, I would say. But as far as thousand piece puzzles go, like it's not like I'm creating a forest or an ocean, just all the separate little pictures within one make it a little bit easier to identify where things are going to go. So I've greatly enjoyed that. I haven't even spent that much time working on it. I mean, things have been busy. We've had the Emily Awards, all this stuff. There have only been a few sittings where I've sat down and worked on it. The girls helped me one time, but I got to get it done soon because we're having a big party on my birthday. We had to shift Christmas to basically my birthday, which is the 27th. Like Pub and Jeff, we're gonna come on Christmas Eve and now we've all got this snowstorm. Um, so we moved it to my birthday, which is cool with me. And you best believe I'm gonna have that puzzle table out. And I have a It's a Wonderful Life puzzle that I'm thinking about doing next. This is the shade five in this foundation, this ambient soft glow. And I've heard tons of great reviews. Um, I'm trying not to use too much of it. I'm using almost a full pump and just dabbing it around and see this is what it looks like this is what I was explaining in that semi like new stuff haul video I don't know why I didn't just name it a haul um but see how it looks so yellowy and so light and then it does kind of work in how much did I pay for this how much was it let me see let me tell you because I'm paying about six dollars for wet and wild photo focus and this costs 58 dollars I mean really I'm not a big mathematician here, but that's many times more than my <laughs> wild photo focus. Now let's do it. If we round up to 60 and we go 60 divided by 6, that's about 10 times more than wet and wild photo focus. And let's see if we are so amazed by the finished look. And yes, I've blended in with a brush before. I've just been using this e.l.f. Total Face sponge a lot since my beauty blender needs to be cleaned. Now, I'm liking the look a little better. It looks much glowier. Oops, I got hair right there. It's looking much glowier on top of that e.l.f. stuff. It's verging on just a little light. I feel like maybe this shade is. But all in all, I'm just like not amazed. I mean, I'm getting medium coverage. I am getting a soft glow. It looks a little more matte, like I said, if you don't put it over <laughs> really glowy primer. It's kind of a duh comment there, but yeah. Almost 10 times the cost of Wet n Wild. I'm just not sold on it. I'm not saying I don't like it. And you know, as I sat there and I did that video where I was telling you about the new things I was trying, as I edited, I was like, you know, the face looks good. 
the, the finish of the skin looks good. It's not that I'm hating this, it's more so that I'm saying there is so much out there right now from the drugstore that is phenomenal. And you know, you compare this to like, is it Wet n Wild Photo Focus or even the True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum? I think it's really, really similar in finish on the skin to this. If I had to do it all over again, I don't think I'd buy it. I definitely wouldn't buy it. I'm not angry, I'm just saying. Elf uh, Hydrating Camo Concealer in the Light Peach Shade. I've been wearing the heck out of this ever since my little dry spell over here on this eye. We'll call that the dry spell, yes. Just because I feel like it's been agreeing with my skin. And we get it around everywhere. Gonna need to make sure the skin stays hydrated with this whole uh, brutal cold that we have coming. So I'm first gonna use this little dual complexion brush and see where I put those dots? I'm gonna just spread that product out. See, a small dot can go a long way. This is why we don't need to be swiping a ton off of the applicator because look what's truly there with only one dot. Okay, move it around a little bit. Make it take up some surface area. Don't fully blend it, just move it around a little. Get it a little bit spread out. Okay, now, now's the time where you go in with your beauty blender and you really get after it. Pressing and dabbing it in. And now you're pressing and dabbing in a really smooth application. Instead of pressing and dabbing suddenly over one dot, and then it's like, what is that one dot doing? You know, absorbing into your sponge or, you know, not getting very evenly applied. I'm not criticizing, I've, I've been there, I've done that. But this really gets a nice, even application. And then maybe you have to go back to that brush because you're like, oh, I got a cavern there, can't reach. Yeah, we'll move that up a little. I am so excited by this snow event though. I wish it would have timed out differently to where maybe it could have come like just after we had visitors and we could have kind of kept the original plans for Christmas Eve and Christmas and all that jazz. But but it's like now that we've made new plans, I, I'm, I'm a flexible person. I've fully accepted the fact that things have to change and now I'm gonna embrace the snowstorm. Hard for me not to, I love snow. That's all blended in. That's a great concealer, you know? That is just a phenomenal concealer to have for six um, I've been playing around with under eye setting powders as I always do. Um, in a recent video you may have seen me use a Laura Mercier a little pressed compact and did I say that I got that idea from Marie Osmond? Yeah. Um, keep an eye on Marie Osmond TikTok. She is one of the most random and funny. Uh, the stuff she does. Recently she's walking up to a snowy Taco Bell and she walks up to the drive through speaker and she's like, our bus can't fit through here with the snow so can I just order here? And then like another time she's just having a chugging contest of a bottle of water with somebody else. Um, another time she's swearing by like how mustard is some kind of immunity booster and she just like straight up takes a bottle of French's and just it just she's crazy and she does do some beauty tips as well and um i had this secret blurring powder for under eyes she was talking about how like using some of this on top of like this abh pencil which i also had the pro pencil just found that interesting and then i'm like oh i actually have the secret brightening powder in just the loose and i'm actually liking that a lot on my under eyes, so I'm gonna use some of that. That pressed one seems to be very hard to find. When I'd used it in a video and then I tried to link it, I had a hard time finding it, but using our little powder puff and just going in on the under eye here. So I know I've talked about Bold and the Beautiful here. I like watching Bold and the Beautiful, you know, like it's a little half hour soap on uh, CBS, 12.30 every day, Central Time. You know, I'm into that. I'm invested in Sheila. I was very invested in Brooke and Ridge and Taylor and all that. But also, after Bubba goes up for a nap at one o'clock every day, what I used to have on, what used to come on TV, was Days of Our Lives on NBC. And I would watch that, and then they moved to Peacock, which we have that Peacock app on our Apple TV. And so I'm like, I'm gonna continue to watch Days of Our Lives at this time. Like, I'm a creature of habit. I feel it's like a comforting thing, these, these soap operas that come on every day. Like, and for a long time, I didn't get what the heck was going on on Days of Our Lives. Like, there's a, there's a lot. A lot of little sublines, so many characters. And now I've got a pretty good handle on it. 
and I freaking love Days of Our Lives. And guys, let me tell you, I watched soaps when I was pretty young with my mom and sister. I remember summers vividly watching all my children. So I guess I'm just predisposed to wanting to see shows like this. You know, everybody has their guilty pleasure show. But what I can get over and what I want to start doing more in my everyday life is the, oh, hi, kitten. Hi, Bisky. Oh, you look sleepy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Say hi to the folks. Hi, folks. What I love, what just kind of boggles my mind is at the end of a scene in a soap opera, when you've got that stare that happens. So these people have just had an interaction. Like, let's say in Days of Our Lives, Brady's telling somebody, there's nothing going on with Kristen. And then the scene just ends with a, with a look, a long look. Even sometimes somebody will throw down an accusation like, you've been sleeping with EJ. And then she'll just stand there like, I'd be like going out like, no, I didn't. But they just give a, a look. And I'm like, do I need to just give more looks in my life? And then you hear the music and it goes off to another scene or to a commercial. I need to just be given more long looks because I talk too much. That's what I'm gonna do between products. Let's see if I can do it. I'm gonna use some of my CoverGirl Outlast Extreme Wear Full Coverage Powder, which I have in Creamy Natural. This is so good. I think I meant to use this in a video where I was demoing the Red Cap Foundation and the Red Cap Concealer. This can't really be Red Cap. We'll call this Red Pan Powder. It's good. I like it. It adds a little more coverage. Uh, just makes the whole surface of the skin a little more consistent. I don't really have to put on a bunch of this today, but I just, I kind of like it. That was my look. Now, the most frustrating part of Days of Our Lives right now is the fact that Brady had to leave Chloe to save three women's lives. And he's got to witness her being with Stefan. Stefan throwing out all these things like, you know, you're terrible, blah, blah, blah. He made a noble move to save lives. But why can't he just whisper to Chloe on the side, hey, Kristen conned me into doing this, but just hang in there. Like, I, I'll figure this out. That whole dynamic is hard to watch almost. I'm using my L'Oreal True Match Lumi bronzer. I love this bronzer, I really do. It's kind of like cool, but it has a little glowiness. It, sometimes it's hard to find cool, glowy bronzers, you know? Kind of a unique tone. I like it. I'm not looking to get like super deep, dark bronze, but just a little bit. You know, you can see what's happening here. The girls had a little Christmas gift exchange at cheerleading practice last night. Pictures looked so cute. That was like a little Christmas appetizer for them. They came home all like, I love what I got. See, isn't this pretty? I dig this. You know what I also live for with soap operas is when they will quietly play like Christmas music in the background. Like, okay, they're sitting there at the pub and they're talking things over and you're quietly hearing, oh, come all ye faithful in the background or something. Like, I, I love that. I was raised on it, guys. I was raised on soap opera drama and QVC. Speaking of Christmas songs, what is your absolute favorite Christmas song? It's hard for me to pick. I, lo I love so many. I do love Oh Come All You Faithful. You gotta love Oh Holy Night. Like, I can belt out Oh Holy Night. Um, the other day, Mom was over, and we just started singing Christmas songs, and she'll, like, harmonize with me. Um, that's gonna be another fun party game on my birthday. Can you harmonize with Mom? Everybody will be forced to try. Like, last night, I asked Bub if he could harmonize on a note with me, and he hit it perfectly. I'm like, you can do this. But what was I talking about? Oh, we were singing Oh Holy Night, and the girls are, like, full-on talking, or practically wrestling on the couch. Mom and I are fully invested in singing Oh Holy Night, belting it out, and kids don't care. They have no respect, you know? Like, I sing all over the house all the time. I can't get so much as a, wow, Mommy, that was great. You really put your heart and soul into that, Mommy. No, like, no. They just, they're just living life like this happens all the time, because I guess it does happen all the time. I sing around the house all the time. Bubba's the only one who will sit there and kind of look at me like, Oh, mommy, it's the greatest thing ever. I'm using this blush today. I'm using this blush from Say. It's called Chili, appropriately, because it is that like rosy cheeked look. And I'm gonna put, this is can be a potent blush, okay? I'm gonna put a little bit onto my hand and kind of spread it. Like I'm spreading it on the side of the applicator. So not a ton of products going down, but it's going down in a fairly thin and even way. And then I'm gonna use my Sephora 56 kind of stamp it 
on the cheeks. This is such a pretty shade. I fall in love with it again every time I put it on. Like, look at that. And it does have a little moisture in it, but it doesn't interfere with like what I've got going on. I mean, I have powdered skin on under this and it, it still all kind of works. Oh, dang. I love that. That's been my best application of that yet, I think. This method. Take the side of the applicator. Get a thin amount applied to the hand, like so. I really ended up using everything I put on there. And then do kind of a stipple with a dense brush. The dense brush stipple. Do I have my gifts wrap yet? Nope. I don't. I thrive on that being kind of a late in the game effort, you know, because I don't leave them out under the tree for the kids to, you know, stand around speculating and counting and, you know, they do stuff like that. While I'm belting out Oh Holy Night in the other room, they're in there speculating and counting and comparing on the gifts, so I don't, I don't give them the chance to do that. Right now, under the Christmas tree is just a bunch of uh, Amazon packages that have come in from other family members. Look at this. See that glow that is strictly coming from that blush, but it's not super tacky. Sorry if you see a few little remnants. I'm, I'm redoing my nails. I had one chip and felt like I needed to redo it all, which is rare with the gel nails to have even any chips. Been doing a lot with my hands this week. Oh, that's so nice. That is just so nice. You just gotta know how to work that blush, but it can be just lovely for you. And then, Add a little bit of this. Why are we not talking about this more? My friends, this Hello Halo from Wet n Wild and Halo Goodbye. Just put a couple dabs right in here. I think I'll use that same, will I use the same brush? Yeah, I will. Uh-oh, you need to go potty? Okay. Kitten. Sorry, I was interrupted by a kid who needs to go potty and a cat walking through my empties bin. There's that glow on the cheeks. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Really nice and just up close doesn't really look like anything, but wow. Texture of the skin is just rocking right now. For brows, and I'm using my Kosas Brow Pop here. We know about how I love holding this brow pencil that is square shaped. And it's a tiny teardrop shape as far as the actual product. And it just goes in easy. Look, I'm loving it more and more. It was an Emily Award winner after all. What was that noise? It sounded like somebody opening up a slice of cheese. I spend a lot of time up here wondering what the sounds are in my house. Okay, there's that brow. See, good, easy. Not even thinking about it. Trying to solve the mysteries of the house. Somehow the brows get filled in. And you may be saying, Em, how do you get videos done if you're glued to days of our lives during nap time? No, I'm actually... Hello? Well, actually, I'm not glued to it. I'm editing while I have it on. But it's fairly easy to pick up what's happening. Okay. Brows are pretty well filled in here. I don't know how days of our lives is still part of the content right now. And then, just for consistency's sake, I'm using this Kosas, the Air Brow. This is just the gel in dark brown. I don't need a lot of this. This can lay down some color, you know, kind of like Glossier Boy Brow. So I just really lightly do this. It also is square shaped. Square shaped pencils and products. That's what brands need to do to level up in 2023. I'm telling you. There's already new drugstore stuff coming out, gang. Normally, it was like January would be a big time for new stuff, and they're like trickling it in on Ulta's website already. Yes, they are. I've ordered some, so that'll be coming. Let's do some Milani eyeshadow primer. Just caught a memory from like three years ago on the old Alexa there. Me looking goofy in a Santa hat. I love Santa hats. Milani eyeshadow primer. And here's the thing. 
very small detail of this look that I'm excited to do, but it also forces the whole trajectory of the rest of the eye look to be a certain thing. I have been using my Persona eyeliner in the bronze shade because I believe I said, oh, I love these liners, but I haven't used that much of the bronze. And that was all it took for me to start using a lot of the bronze. And I love it on the lower lash line. It's so pretty, plus impeccable staying power, okay? And it's not like so loud and bronzy that it would have to be worn strictly with like warm eyeshadow looks but I thought it would pull out kind of a warmish palette to use it with. I pulled out my Ilia. I love these little necessary eyeshadow palettes. This is the Warm Nude. And um, yeah, I'm just going to use that today. Ooh, I meant to put this on. My Fenty cooling stuff. Ice. I love this. I love this feeling. I have an ice roller up here that I used before any of my skincare. It's from Sephora. It looks like in a metal kind of roller. It doesn't do as well as the one by the brand Flawless that I keep in my freezer downstairs. Granted, this is being refrigerated and that one's being frozen, so that's probably why. Ooh, the cooling tingle. The minty tingle. But it is kind of nice most mornings to go over my face with that. I'm using just that light matte right there. So these are matte matte, matte, and matte, and you just have two shimmers. It's a very sensible little palette. I really like the quality, and I have the cooler one as well, which gives you a little bit of plumminess. Like I said, I want to work with that little bronze pencil, so one reason for it to be bronze. So just a really light crease, kind of barely there. Now we're going to intensify it a little bit with this terracotta. You also have a nice little mirror here, which we love. We're trying not to confuse the camera, though, so we don't really use it. Does anybody know the Christmas song? Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Okay, that song gets huge. Why on these Christmas specials are they not bringing in, like, Kelly Clarkson to take off on that song? Okay? I was just telling Mom this the other night. Like, that has got to be the most underrated, like, Christmas Eve anthem that's out there, but nobody really sings it. It needs to be brought to the forefront. I remember singing that at a Christmas concert in fourth grade, and fourth grade was a rough year for me in my whole entire life, like fourth grade. Fourth grade sucked. We had to learn the recorder. You know, those little hated, was not good at it. We could barely figure it out. And then I went on the following year, fifth grade band. Okay, pick an instrument, everyone. Everybody's picking an instrument. I didn't even know if I really wanted to do band, but I picked an instrument. I picked flute and end up being first chair flute, taking like special private lessons the next town over, like doing great things with the flute almost my entire um, high school career until like it kind of started to conflict too much with cheerleading and I chose cheerleading. But recorder, fourth grade, that stunk. That stunk royally. Also, I don't think I've ever said this in a video, but I think I'm gonna say it now. I'm just in one of those moods. I, in fourth grade, it was, I think the, was it the fall or was it, at some period where a midterm came out. I get a midterm and instead of getting all A's on it, I think I had a B and an A minus and some kind of teacher comment that may have alluded to the fact that I wasn't understanding something very well. And this is handwritten stuff. I took that midterm and I changed the grade. First off, I somehow changed that B to an A. Okay. And while I was at it, I changed that A minus to an A plus. And I even changed a word that made it a positive statement instead of a concerning statement. I was used to everything going perfectly on any kind of report I brought home. And I was scared for this not being perfect. But where was my head at? I knew this thing had to be signed and returned to school. What was the teacher gonna say? I thought maybe we can just kind of forget to get it signed and it'll just fly under the radar. And nobody has to know that I got a B on this. Immediately after I did this, I was sick like sick to my stomach. I couldn't go to school. For like two days, I stayed home with this unexplainable 
illness, which it was anxiety, sick to my stomach over what I had done. And my dad was the principal. My dad was the principal. And uh, one day he came home and it was like midday. And he was like, oh yeah, Mrs. Boyer said she needs your midterm back. So I'll go ahead and sign that and bring it back. Oh. I may have actually thrown up at this point. He's gonna take it back. It's gonna, it's not like it's gonna come back within a pile of a bunch of them. It's just gonna come back. She's gonna see what I did. And then she told him that some things had been changed and I felt terrible. Like I was my own worst punishment on that whole situation. Like I think my parents realized that she feels the weight of what was wrong here. I've, I've never in my life did anything like that again. But I was just scared and it was like kind of the moral of the story was, you know, it's okay. You you just go to school and do your best. And if you're not understanding something or if, you know, something's not clicking, I mean, it wasn't like I got an F on my midterm. I just got a B instead of an A. I just needed to know that just trying your best is okay. I needed to just chill out a little bit. But I wasn't really getting the recorder. That happened. I remember knowing that that was going to happen. There was some kind of field trip. It was like bald eagle days or something. Yeah, this must have been fall at some point. And I was like feeling sick on the bald eagle days because I knew my midterm wasn't going to be what I wanted it to be. You know, <laughs> it was just like... Uh, and I don't blame my parents, but even though my dad was a principal, I, he didn't put one bit of pressure on me. And I never really felt like mom was really looking over my shoulder that much either. Like, I had a lot of freedom as a kid. I really feel something I put on myself of wanting to be perfect and kind of my first go-round with things not being perfect on something I brought home, you know? And also knowing I was struggling with that damn recorder, sorry and it was just a hard time. I'm using this reddish shade out here. I can't, I can't believe I even talked about that. But if there's anything you can instill in your own children, instill trying your best. I'm using combo of both of these. Trying your best and that that's what's most important and that like as much as school feels like your entire world at that age and that nothing exists outside of your school experience and how well you do and what that grade is on that paper you bring home, that's not all there is in life. You're not responsible for peaking in fourth grade. Like, who cares, honestly, in the long run, how you did in fourth grade? Who cares how well you played that recorder? Realize that there's more to life. There's more to this world. And holding yourself to a high standard is great and all, but you don't need to become obsessed with it. There's more to life, like being a kind person, like being a helpful person, like having compassion for others. That was an age where I hadn't yet necessarily adopted a lot of other passions, let's say. I had hobbies and whatnot, but I hadn't developed a lot of passions outside of just trying to achieve well in school. And I just allowed myself to get very stressed out using a little bronze. I just got a small flat brush that's different from the one I was using on the outside. And this just a pretty low key little palette here. A nice one to use when you're telling horror stories from elementary school. Um, fifth grade was great. <laughs> I had a new vibe in fifth grade and it was great. Then we had to get into junior high math and then, but I mean, fifth grade was awesome. Okay, I'm taking a little bit of that brown just under the outside and then we're gonna come in with that Persona pencil. I can't believe I changed the grade. You know, I just had to go on the chance that it got forgotten. See, it's this bronze. It's just super soft. Like, here's what the color is. It might be kind of hard to see. Rich bronze with some shimmer. And you don't have to worry about this getting smudgy because these Persona liners last so well. So it just kind of goes on, really, about the... Oh, excuse me, the way I want it. But you can smudge it a little bit. You could use this as upper liner, too but I just really like it down here. It's a little softer. And then maybe I'll use, I'll use some black on the upper. I said I was scared of this black. Like it's just an intense rich black. It's not literally like, oh, I'm too scared to use it. It just goes down so smooth. It practically looks like liquid, I would say though, because it's so black and so soft. 
That's the thing. Oh, another Christmas song I like is Carol of the Bells. Love that. Persona liners rock. I love them. Okay, we're gonna do mascara today. I think I'll use my L'Oreal Unlimited. One of several mascaras I'm really liking. Did that fourth grade confession come out as soon as that uh, lip stuff came on? Like, maybe that stuff is driving me to overshare and give old stories. Oh, my family and I, we laugh about that story to this day. Let's we'll talk about what I did and what I pulled off and what I apparently pulled off pretty well because nobody questioned it. Why wouldn't I have just signed one of their names to the midterm? Then it gets returned rather than go and change grades and words and stuff. Well, were your parents expecting a midterm to come home? I don't even know if they were expecting it. My, my dad was the principal though, so he probably knew. Yeah, they would have known. Like, it's midterm date. Where's your midterm? Give yourself a break, fourth graders. Enjoy your childhood. Don't get so wrapped up in what the midterm says. Just try your best. Don't change the grades. I wonder if mom kept that midterm. I wonder if we that still exists somewhere in a cardboard box in an attic. If I ever find it, I'm gonna tell you all here and now, if I ever find that midterm that I altered, I will show it to you. Cause I wanna see, I wanna appreciate that work that I did. What's going on with you? What do you have here? It's my new candy. She got that at the cheerleading gift exchange last night. How's come the paw fell off? Were you um, playing with it and not no. sleeping? I was sleeping. Mommy? Mm -hmm. I was sleeping. Do, 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 <laughs> All that hair. All right, look at Bisky. Bisky wants love. She wants tummy rubs. It's time to go back to bed, hun. Okay. Not play with your doll, but actually sleep, sleep. Okay. Can I turn off the light in the bathroom? You should turn off the light in the bathroom, yes please. I got a thing of castor oil that is said to be good for uh, lash growth. Like it specifically says it on the bottle. It's a big old bottle. I got it from Walmart. Should I use it? <laughs> like, is this a good idea? Or, or would any of you caution me on that? An owl! Oh my gosh, I bet the owl knows. I bet the owl is trying to warn the wilderness of the impending winter storm. Ooh, 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 ooh. The tender, gentle voice of the owl. Um, I'm gonna use a little Cali Ray Come Hill in High Water. What was your favorite grade in school? And do you think it was your favorite because of the teacher or because you just liked what you did in that grade? I really remember liking third grade a lot. I liked my teacher a lot and I, I liked just the nature of third grade. I remember reading on the floor a lot. I remember there being a thrill of, you can read and take your shoes off. <laughs> Okay. I like third grade and fifth grade a lot. Second grade, maybe I'm not holding as strong of a memory of. My first memory of school-related anxiety was actually in kindergarten when they had us do something called listening lessons, and then they put up these huge cardboard dividers on our group tables that we sat at so nobody could copy off of anyone else. <gasps> Just the fact that they put those there. It wasn't like I was copying off of anybody, but the fact that I had these walls around me now, I couldn't focus on the listening lesson. I, like, I think things have evolved since then. Since 1990 or whatever that was. It would have been about 1990. My years in school correspond with, like, the number. So, like, 1991, I was in first grade, 1992, second grade. Blah, blah, blah. And then I graduated in 2002. So I'm gonna wipe a little bit of this goo off. And then I have a little lip combo that I think is really pretty that I hope you all like as well. And then I think we'll probably do a little more blush. I really like to imagine that the owl is like the leader, the old wise leader of the woods and that the owl really is in charge and is kind of like, you know, communicating important vital information to the rest of the woods, you know? These were both in that little tart 
um, set. Do you remember early on in my holiday reviews, I reviewed some Tarte stuff and there was like the Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump, which I have in Cherry Blossom. And in that set also was the Maracuja Juicy Lipstick in Rose. And I've just been kind of layering these two and it's really, really pretty. So here's the lipstick. This worn as is is really nice too. I wore it alone the other day. It's on my lip. Dry skin? Okay. Thank you. I think my mom thought I did that whole shenanigan with the midterm because um, my sister who was, you know, years older than me, my sister and brother, like big age gap between my sister and brother and me. I think she thought I, I had an awareness that my sister was very, very smart, like very high achieving, that I wanted to be like that or I felt bad if I wasn't like that. Like she was just super smart, like naturally very smart. I felt like I was a smart kid to an extent, but I also felt like I really had to work hard and study hard to like do well on a test, you know? I worked my buns off like throughout high school and stuff and ended up being salutatorian of the class. But I don't think that was it really. I think I just did something that was beneath some sort of standard I had set for myself and it was my first go round of like bringing home grades. I think it might have been the start of letter grades. Like there was a time when it was just S, like S or S plus satisfactory, you know, like that was what you came home with. And I don't know if maybe fourth grade was when letter grades kind of began for us. I'm not sure, but I wasn't really thinking about what my sister was doing. She at that point would have been well into college and stuff, you know, or into grad school. I don't think I ever really held her in a comparison sort of way. Like I thought of her more like another mom to me rather than I'm comparing anything I'm doing to what she's doing. You know what I'm saying? Like that big of an age gap. So that wasn't why I did that. I think it was just kind of like my first time of feeling like I completed something that was subpar or less than what I wanted to do. Look at that on top. Isn't that pretty? So this is that cherry blossom, which is really kind of light and a little bit sheer. And it's kind of thick like a lot deposits on this is that classic like you click it up and you get like a certain level of shine off on your lips why did that door just open and then we'll take a little bit of this we all know biddy's not sleeping right and you can feel like a little bit of a tingle with that juicy plump on top loving and then i'm just going to take some of my kosas cloud set this is what I always like to do. Just a little bit, right in a certain zone. We know where this zone is. This is breezy. T-zone it if you need to. That's the look, guys. That's my snow day glam. Not going anywhere, you bet. Not leaving the house but I like doing my makeup anyway. Thank you for listening. If you're still here, God bless you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for hearing my story, my fourth grade tale of woe. No, it wasn't. It wasn't all bad. Things, like I said, got a lot better in fifth grade. <laughs> you guys have a great day. Have the merriest of Christmases, and I will see you all again very soon. I love you. Bye.